Hello there and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look through my collection of publications of the Penguin Collectors Society. So if you're into vintage penguin books, I'm sure you're already a member of the Penguin Collectors Society and they've got a whole host of publications about penguin books that they've uh, written and have produced themselves, which are fantastic and a massive resource if you're into collecting vintage penguin books. So uh, without further ado, let's have a look at my collection. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay then, so I joined the Penguin Collector Society back in 1995. So what's that, 27 years now? Amazingly, I've been a member. Um, I started collecting penguins before that. Um, in fact, I started when I was at school, but um, it was nice to... Um, you know, it was nice to have the official club. And, and when I joined, I picked up pretty much everything I could get my hands on. So this was particularly good because this is like the supplement. So in the Penguin story, uh, which is Q21, um, they list all the Penguin books from 1935 to 1956. This takes it right up to 1971. So it picks up where that last one uh, left off. And uh, this was always my sort of cutoff point with collecting vintage Penguins. As a general rule, I like to have them... Uh, well, they've got them numbered up to 3311. Um, about the end of 1970, uh, 1971, when ISBNs came in, that's sort of when I have my cutoff point. Um, so these are not in um, the most accurate order, but I'll try and do it. So they published something called a miscellany. So this is an original one back to 1986. This was like one of the first times I think they looked at, you know, wartime penguin publications. And a lot of these these days have been updated they've been, the club has gone back and they've uh, looked at the data again and um they've uh, they've updated this was another one of their early ones looking at um the forces and the forces book club and prisoner of war and the thing is thanks to the internet and you know collectors sharing their knowledge um we know an awful lot more now about than what we ever did about this sort of period and this is a bit more of a supplementary catalogue um, sort of the later books that weren't covered in Q21. So I guess that goes with that bottom one down there. As I said, they're not in perfect order. Here's miscellany number five. Look at the Penguin Illustrated Classics. Lovely, very short-lived series. Of which number one, if you're looking for it, is much, much harder to find than um, some of the, than the rest of them. Uh, this isn't actually a, a Penguin Collector's one. It's um, by Sally Wood, Books for the Bairns. A lot of tie-ins to the early sort of, uh, or where you could see the influences of the early uh, Puffin books, uh, Puffin story books and Puffin picture books worth having. Uh, another Puffin related one, Happy Birthday Puffin. Can't remember which anniversary this was for. Might have been the, uh, 30th, I don't know, Breath of Puffin, I think. What is this one about? I don't know, but 1991, this one was published. So that would have been 50 years of, of Puffin. Puffin started in 1941. Um, so what is this? This is a, like a supplementary, like look at the entire history of sort of Penguin, a collector's companion. That was part one. And that was part two. These have been long since superseded, but as I said, I wanted to show you what's come out over the years and sort of, I've tried to do them historical, so in historical order. So the very earliest ones, which are basically just, you know, glorified photocopies. And as the, uh, as the quality has progressed throughout the years. Uh, miscellany number nine, this is a look at the normal Penguin classics. And as I said, a lot of these are um, have been updated now and are also still in print. You can get them direct from uh, the Penguin Collector Society website. This is slightly out of position. Miscellany number four, looking at American American penguins and Christmas, Alan Lane Christmas books. I do like the American ones. Don't see them that often over here. Um, where's number four? Don't see them that often over here in the wild, but they are out there. And obviously the internet, oops, the internet has made things much, much easier to get those sorts of books. And what we got, Mock Missing Miscellaneous. This is like numbers that didn't get issued, ones that were announced and then they never came out. And uh, books that aped 
the penguin design of which that seems to happen all the time these days isn't it um this is a slightly more recent one the main this is typography of penguin books and this is the ones that I, I just love these because they've really upped their game in recent years and uh, taken the Penguin Collector's publications to a new level. And we've got some really, uh, really nice stuff in here. As I said, I've just basically emptied the shelf of all my sort of Penguin related publications um, just for you to, uh, to see. What's this here? Penguin by Designers. 70 years of penguin design 2005 that was blimey and uh, they do these sorts of things as well so this was a reproduction of um the booklet that was produced for uh, alan lane's funeral so uh, i think a few hundred of those got printed that's like a, a facsimile reprint what's this here this is a look at the buildings of england this is their first stab at doing it great great series as we know of the buildings of England that haven't by any means got anything like even a half of them but it's a series that I'm looking to improve on now these I thought I'd include these even though they're not um Penguin Collector Society but um it was just like the magazine in the UK book and magazine collector they um they have over the years printed a few little articles on collecting vintage paperbacks and i've got the penguin related ones this is also particularly good because it's got a thing on hg wells and kingsley amos both authors who i really like um and uh, this just looked at sort of because it's i mean a book on collectible penguins would um would literally uh, be a book in itself you know so just trying to do it in a magazine article is very very difficult to do um i don't know if this one gives prices or not certainly some of the later ones we got do yeah it tries to give prices so what does it say um it doesn't mention like number five or six the agatha christie's number one 40 to 60 pound yeah it's um it's miles out of date and uh, doesn't really list the real rarities but who cares it was quite a nice little article that one back in the day that was 1995 then we have this one, which was from 2006, Papa Pick Up a Penguin, The Ultimate Collector's Guide. I believe this one was possibly written by Steve Hare, um, but I can't be 100% sure. Yeah, nine, page 24, let's have a look. Uh, March of the Penguins. Yeah, it doesn't actually say... Um, ah. Oh, Tim Graham for helping compiling the articles. Tim, Tim uh, helped put this one together. Yeah, lovely stuff. First ten penguins. Doesn't make any highlight of number six there. Mysterious Affair at Stars, which I believe is probably the most expensive penguin. Now it does list Biggles. Number 348, Cine Massacre, it says is 30 to 40 pounds, and Ulysses 6 to 8, which I guess is about right. Yeah, quite a nice little article, this one, with prices and that. Might be worth you tracking a copy of that down. And then this was the very last time before this magazine folded, um, where it's got a, an article on early penguin crime. So this was the last time. Let's have a look here. Page one one four. So when was this published? This is the, even this is twelve years old. And this is by oh, Jim Rayner. Okay. List some a uh, few rarities there, as you can see. And certainly the crime titles always have been super collectible. So the wartime ones, yeah, still only listing them at 20 to 30 pounds when some of these are literally in the multiple hundreds nowadays, four to 500 for certain crime titles. In fact, well, we, on my channel, we've seen them go for even more than that, haven't we? Right, so onto the more recent ones now. So this is one of the revived editions for the Penguin Companion. Much more, this is like the second version of it, much more comprehensive. But still not the last of it. This is the 2006 revision. But even that 
gets superseded later on, which we'll see. A new look at the Penguin Classic. So this is another update. This is really, really nice. As you can see. You better start another pile here. Okay, so Penguin by Designers. Look at the marble grid there. And how the uh, Penguin cover design has changed. A really good one, this. This is a recommended one if you like the design of penguins, which I do. It's a fascinating read, as you can see. There we are, that's March 2007. Amazingly 15 years old. Um, I'll do some of the smaller ones because they're sort of in the, the pile here. This is a great one looking at the work of Abraham Games, another cover designer uh, written by his daughter. Naomi game. So um, this was a short lived experiment where um, a penguin did about 30 illustrated covers, probably as a knee jerk reaction to what was happening at Pan at the time. And I think they're really, really nice. I haven't quite got them all. There's a, just, I think I'm missing three now. And then I'm going to do a video dedicated to the, uh, the game's covers. But I really, really like them. That's a little look at those. Uh, highly recommended. Father and Son. This is by Steve Hare again. I think this is uh, Famous Penguin Names, um, and uh, it's uh, little pieces on them by their offspring. This one's fantastic, love this. This is a look at the uh, May Gray books in Penguin. Fantastic book. This, this is recommended. Read this one right through fairly recently for my dedicated May Gray and Simonon video, which uh, is up on the channel now. There's another one of their earlier ones, actually. It says miscellany number 12. So this one celebrated the 60th anniversary of Pelican. This is quite an early one, though. I remember when these were coming out. 1997. Yeah, Russell Edwards and Steve Hare both sadly missed real knowledgeable people in the world of, of Penguin. Yeah, another collector's companion. I think this was the second one, and we've seen the third one already, and there is yet another one to come. <laughs> As I said, this sort of in size pile, this. Um, Alistair McClear in search right here, looking for Alan Lane. I forget what this one's exactly about now. This is nice, 21 years. This was, uh, what was this one? I think this is 21 years of the Penguin Collectors Society rather than anything else. Yes. But using the uh, the classic 21 years logo. This one's on that um, uh, book by Tanya Schmoller. Worked at Penguin in the early days. Quite nice. Pelicans at 80, so we saw Pelicans at 70. This is the Pelicans at 80. Done in mock Pelican style. And their influence cannot be understated. This one was a, like a tribute to Steve Hare. There he is on the front. Um, lovely, lovely man. Helped me out in my early days of collecting um, uh, penguin books when I started and uh, um, always uh, generous in his time for new collectors. Absolutely fantastic collection. Um, his main penguin collection has gone to um, a university now, which was uh, covered in the latest issue of the Penguin Collector. Um, here's a more up-to-date look at the Buildings of England series. There they are. Nice run of the hardbacks there. Fantastic series. Uh, quite tricky to put a set together you're going to take yourself some time um, i've started on the paperbacks and i'm uh i reckon i'm about halfway through the paperback one of those now shakespeare and penguin got some of the original ones but i don't collect much in the more modern editions but they are very very influential and lots of people remember reading them when they had to study Shakespeare. Right, I'm just going to pause there because the rest of the books are all quite large format, so I need to make a bit of room. Okay, so this once was us. This is a, a look at penguin education. Not an area that I'm particularly interested in in my sort of penguin collecting adventures, but um, 
it doesn't matter if, if it's historical and published by Penguin, it is of interest. And I would imagine there's some quite scarce books in with that little lot. Uh, Penguins in print, a bibliography. Looking at books about penguins, historical as well as uh, contemporary. Great stuff here. It's a rabbit hole many would love to go down, but the books, sometimes the books are so obscure, you know, you don't often uh, come across them, but there we are. Lost Causes, a miscellany. And I just remembered that one of the books Penguin did put out was uh, a missing um, puff and picture book, um, Life Histories uh, by Paxton Chadwick, which never got printed as a, uh, a puff and picture book back in the day, but Penguin did release it and uh, that's with my puffin picture book so i haven't got that one to show you but that is also another uh one published by the collector society here's a look at the penguin modern painters very nice in the same format as the modern painters were same size and the oblong format great little series this one um sort of overlooked dirt cheap to pick up today just a few pounds a book and uh quite a nice little history of that one now this is the final, or this is the most up-to-date version of the, the Penguin Companion, and you can see it's now a beautiful hardback. Um, this is the fourth version of it now, and it really is, now, almost 300 pages. It really is quite, quite comprehensive. And this is the one to get, of course. Highly, highly recommended. Bang up to date. and uh, profusely illustrated. So it's a real masterpiece that. It's a really, really good. It's the best book on collecting uh, penguins in one volume that there is. Um, this is lovely, Penguin by Illustrators. Another very, very lavish uh, book from the Collector's Society, this one. So we'll flick through, it's a large format softback. They connect different illustrators over the years. I'm assuming all of these are still in print, but I may be wrong. Some of these uh, do run out because you don't have to be a member of the society to buy the books, you know, so you can just go to their website, uh, which I will link to down below. And you can just go to the uh, go to their sales page and pick up any of these books that are still in print. They've got about 60 publications in print. So there's lots for you to have a look at. But that's a very, very nice one. This is, a, this is an absolutely fantastic book looking at uh, Noel Carrington and the early Puffin picture books by uh, Joe Pearson, drawn directly to play. I was in Hay on Y as I filmed this literally a week ago, and this was on sale in one of the, uh, the bookshops for £40, so I don't know if it's now gone out of print, but it's fantastic. It took Joe a long, long time to pull together, and he's done a, a wonderful, wonderful job. Um, just, just superb. Um, if you're not following Joe on Instagram, he's now a publisher in his own right, bringing old books like this back into print. Um, and he's on Instagram under the username Design for Today. Um, you can find that online as well. There's one of my all-time favourite puff and picture books, The Arabs, which is by Edward Bolden. Um, one of my real, real loves. Absolutely, I've got a nice hardback of that one. As you can see, this is this is gorgeous. It really, really is. It's the ultimate companion to the Puffin Picture books and books of that nature. And um, it's even in the same format, which is great. It's recommended. This is another great one. Puffin's Progress. As you can see, the society is really up their game of late. And these books are real. They're just fantastic. Highly, highly recommended. But this one's obviously Puffin centric, Puffin storybooks, Puffin picture books, the Puffin fan club, of course, Puffin Post. It's all the K Web era, that's the ones I remember growing up, and I still have a very, very fond spot for uh, Puffin books. And uh, I was able to at least read a few to my kids as they were growing up. <laughs> and then the very last one, as I said, I did these by size, so. Um, We've got this one here, The Paperback Revolution, uh, an essay by Hans Schmoller. Sort of looking at the history and design and how things have changed over the years. Obviously with Penguin at the uh, front, but nice to see the early days of paperback publishing. 
which I really like. I like to collect penguin competitors as well. And we've got this one here, which is um, Typographica 5. Now this is a reprint of a magazine called Typographica. And this one had a particular, um, quite a bit on, on penguins, which is why the Penguin Collector Society reprinted it as like a one for one facsimile. And did a very, very nice job of it. Page of Romic Bar Marber titles there, amongst others. It's very nice. And then they did another one. This is the last one we got to show today. And this was the, the Monotype Recorder. So I believe this is the Penguin Collector Society version um, of, of the original. So this is once again, just the entire magazine. Lots of uh, penguin related content, as you can see how books are put together and things like that. The printing history and what have you. Very, very nice. So that came out originally in 1987. This is the original of, of that one that we've just looked at. This was the original off the shelf one that you could buy at the time. Very scarce, this is the original, which is why the, uh, the Penguin Collector Society reprinted it, but I did actually have one of those. Brilliant. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed looking through my collection of penguin related sort of publications and works of the Penguin Collector Society. There's definitely some fantastic stuff in there for you to get stuck into. And as I said, if you're after any of these, just head on over to the Penguin Collectors website. The link is in the description down below and you can order these direct from them. So there you go. Thank you very, very much for watching today. If you have enjoyed it, do please give the video a thumbs up. If you've not already, do please hit that subscribe button and I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.